thankful to see the way that the Spirit's been leading us this uh, day. That the way that Brother Gene spoke today, he's been speaking along the same line as uh, I, I wanted to speak today about the satisfying the soul. Uh, for the sake of the tapes, I want to go ahead and read the, the text again. This evening, I wanted to speak to you concerning spiritual thirst and, and appetite, about fullness and about fatness about being filled and about being satisfied. Here, here this evening we have a call to those who have a longing for these things that only God can fill. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Now, although given under the Old Covenant, this, uh, this word really is more of a declaration of the way things are under the New. That's the way I'm going to approach it this evening. Uh, any and all who have an appetite for the things of God, they can come and they can have their, they can have their fill. Against such things there is no law. That's the way the, the Apostle said it. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Whosoever will, may come. Now, we notice a stark contrast from, from the way that uh, this is approached from that in the old. We notice that it doesn't say, Ho, oh, I command everyone to come and to drink of these waters. He, he doesn't say, Thus saith the Lord, uh, He who does not come and drinks of this waters, he shall surely die. Although that's true. Really, if you think about it, that's true. The person, whoever doesn't come and avail himself of these living waters, of the provision that's here in these waters, that's what's going to happen. In the end, they are going to die. But it's not, it's not approached in that manner. This is how it's approached. There's life here. There's life at these waters. Who's thirsty? Come. Come and drink. Life's flowing freely here to quench your thirsty spirit. Are you thirsty tonight? Come. Come and drink. Amen. So that's what I'm here to, t to tell you tonight. I'm not here to tell you, well, you ought to drink. I'm not, I'm not here to say, well, we need to be drinking. And you know the thing is about us Christians that we really don't drink as much as we should and we really should drink more, you know. I'm not going to tell us, well, we need to break up into some small groups and I think that we're going to start a, a seminar on, on how, mu how much we need to be drinking and we're going to do a 40 days of drinking. No, I'm saying, who's thirsty tonight? That's what I'm saying. I got some good news for you. This, this evening, I'm going to tell you, if you're thirsty, there's water here for you to drink. And I'm going to tell you that if, that if you're not, if you perceive this evening that you, you may not be as thirsty as you want to be, that you, you can increase in your thirst. This very evening, you can. Because there's a provision for that. So I'm, I'm going I'm to speak more on this, on this, uh, this water as we, uh, as we continue on this. So I'm going to move on. And, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Now we have a view here of how the heavenly economy works. Uh, it's, it's something that confuses the, the wisdom of the wise in this world. Um, to be able to come and to be able to buy this spiritual food, to be able to make this exchange with the Lord, you have to have no money. You have to have nothing. Amen. Uh, that, is, that is to see, you have to see that there's nothing that you can do to compensate or to pay for this, yeah. th for this food that you're going to receive from the Lord. The, the, this, this is for those who are of a humble and a contrite yeah. spirit. This, this water and this food is for those who, uh, um, whose righteousness is as filthy rags from before them. This is for those who are like their Savior, who are meek and lowly. That, that's who this, this food is for. Yet at the same time, you, you can't pay for it, but you have to buy it. Right. Now you understand, this isn't something that, that, that you can learn in, in the world. Uh, there's an example of this. and I, I thought about this as I was going through this. In, in Revelation, the second chapter... And this is, um, this is, he says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and I have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. 
I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. So he tells them, you're wretched, you're miserable, and you're poor, and buy of me gold. <laughs> this isn't something you're going you're gonna to learn in the, the uh, economy classes of your, of your college courses here. This is only something that the Holy Spirit teaches here. Amen. So yea, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. I uh, see later on in the book, Isaiah, he articulates some of uh, the manner of this exchange program, so, so to speak. He says, uh, uh, to give unto them beauty for ashes. So, so do, you, do you have some ashes? Uh, I, th I think we can all testify that if we had some ashes. Well, you give them to him, he can give you some beauty. The, the, the oil of joy for mourning, if that's what you had. If you had some mourning, well, then there you go. You get the oil of joy. And the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I think we can all testify in times past we had that spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. That's, that's the divine exchange program right there. So when we came into Christ, we, were given, we gave Him, so to speak, our sin. Uh, we gave Him our shame, and He gave unto us righteousness and peace. He gave unto us love, and He gave unto us confidence and, and at the atonement. See, we gave over to Him our wicked ways. We, we, just, we gave it to Him. We gave Him our deceived minds and our wicked ways. And, and He gave unto us the mind of Christ. He gave unto us renewed affections. He gave unto us a, a, a new and a living way. He gave unto us... A new man. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so as we continue on this path that's set before us, as we're in this new and living way now, uh, as, as the apostle was, now we can, we can spend and we can be spent for the gospel and, and for the sake of our, of our God and our king, in service to our king. So this is how we, uh, we, we operate in this, in this divine economy. We're, we're able to buy things without price and partake in this. So as we continue our text, he says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Now, in the spiritual marketplace of the world around us, there are things for sale. There's, there, there's good things. There's things that satisfy the soul. There's things that are real, the things that we've been speaking about. There's things that nobody can take away from you, and there are other things. There's things that look good. Things that, uh, just like that, that, the apple on that day when Eve saw it, it looked, it looked good for food, you know. It looked, it looked good to make one wise, you know. Things that look like they satisfy and they would benefit you. And, and this is a, a good lesson to learn at an early age, you know, that, uh, that this is, this is the, the strategy of the wicked one, to make things look and they seem like they would, they would benefit you. But it's a, it's a lie, and it's, 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 it's all built up from the father of lies. This is what Satan does, and he's expert at doing it. He's done it from the very beginning. Uh, the, the, the prophet in our text, he's speaking from the perspective of reality here. He's, he's cutting through the veil of any deception. It, it may seem to the person who's laboring in the field of unrighteousness that they are indeed being satisfied by what they're doing. And in the, in the present, there is some kind of satisfaction realized in it. But ultimately, it's the, it is not satisfaction. Yeah, that's right. It's it's in in the ultimate sense of the world. It isn't in the word. It isn't satisfaction. It's 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 leading them to to perdition. In the ultimate sense, it is the meat that perishes. A any meat that has an expiration date on it, so to speak. That's that's not the meat that you want to partake of. We we want the meat that endureth unto everlasting life. That's the meat that we want. Uh, well, we want the, the water that, the, if any man drinks of it, that he won't thirst again. That, that it shall be a well of water in him springing up into everlasting life. And th this question, it kind of reminded me, um, as I was reading it, of the question that's asked to the house of Israel in the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel. When he says, uh, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Yeah. It's like, 
the way is set before you. Mercy has been held out. I, I've made this provision available. But why would you labor for something that has no reward? I, I, when God has made a way for you to be with Him for eternity, to be satisfied eternally, why would you trade that for something that doesn't even compare? It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense for something you can sense in this the heart of the Lord the, the, the same spirit that Christ had on the earth when when he had in his grief his concern and irritation is just, how long shall I suffer you you perverse generation you know in a sense it was an irritation but in, a, in another sense it was like it, it, he just wishes they would get it you know like so much effort was spent. Hark, and as he continues, he says, Hearken diligent, uh, diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. Uh, you can just see the heart of the Lord in this. It's, he, he really doesn't have any pleasure in the death of the wicked. He continues to have mercy. Uh, he extends himself further than them, and he pleads with them and, and, and entreats them to, to heed his words. Uh, listen carefully to what I'm saying. I, I, I have something that's good for you. Eat it. Yeah. Let your soul delight itself in fatness. Now, I, I, I want to focus on three words here in this sentence. Uh, let, delight, and fatness. Now, first of all, let your soul delight in fatness. Well, this is something that's an exercise, to be sure. It is something which is intentional and something that doesn't happen automatically. This letting which is spoken of our text, is an, it's a new covenant concept. It's something which is spoken much of in the epistles. And let most often is thought of in a passive form, the meaning like allow. But it, it's also defined as to cause. And the sense in which um, we're, we're, there is a sense in which we're passively yielding ourselves to the Spirit and obediently, obediently serving God as He works in our lives, but we're, we're also workers together with God in our salvation. So God doesn't get glory from a salvation which doesn't elicit the involvement of those being saved. That's just that's not what He's doing in salvation. It's not... He, he's creating a church that will be eternally involved in everything that He's doing. Uh, and I, I knew that there were many times in which this was this was used. Um, it was edifying to go through and rehearse this again. I just want to give you a few of these, um, so you can see by you can see by the nature of these admonitions that this isn't used in a passive manner. He says, uh, "Let this mind be in you, be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom." He says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. See, there's some action involved in this. So, but the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. This is a, a something that, that has to be done. The, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us therefore hold fast the profession of our faith. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, we are seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every way, and the sin which also does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that's set before us. Let us let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. See, these are all things that require action and on our part. This, this letting has to do with determination. It has to do with striving and, and tenacity on the part of the believer. It has to do with, with keeping the thing that the Lord has committed unto your trust and being determined to not allow the enemy to take it away from you. So it's just let yourself, let your soul delight itself in fatness. You know, just let that happen. So then let your soul delight itself in fatness. Uh, this, this involves not only culturing an appetite for these things that are fat, so to speak, but rejecting these things that are meager. Being able to recognize these things and, and cast these things off. Uh, this delight is something that has to be maintained. Uh, and, and maintaining it is something that ensures that we'll be able to continue to come back and eat of this fatness that's available to us. 
This is actually a protection to us. God has built this into it that uh, um, as long as we have remain sensitive, as long as we have this longing, as long as we have this, this want to be able to come back and to be able to partake of the things of the Lord, we will come back and partake of them. It's important not only that we come to the water of drinking, that, but we main our, maintain our desire for this water. Uh, it, the water itself is actually designed to be partaken of in this manner. Uh, in, in John 4, when he talks about this, uh, he says, But so, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. It's, it's, it's designed this way. Uh, this principle exists in physical life in general. And... Uh, uh, Thank God that this is the the way that He designed it. The, the Lord imprinted this on our very beings so that we could make this connection that the Lord has made us with appetite so that we would naturally hunger for the thing that sustains our life. Yeah, right. I mean, we could all imagine how dreary life would be if eating was a trial, you know. <laughs> Things taste good because of the fact that it... We have to sustain our life by eating. If if somebody if you have to make somebody eat, or if somebody forgets to eat, there's some kind of dysfunction there, or they're sick, or something like that. So when when we have a case on our hands where we have a church that doesn't desire the word, doesn't desire the sincere milk of the word, it it isn't hungry, it doesn't hunger and thirst for righteousness. That we have a problem on our hands. There's some kind, of, some kind of malady has entered in. This is not the norm in the kingdom. Now, this is the reason why it's absolutely imperative that we don't dabble in partaking of the te- the table of devils. At, at the point that, that that we begin to dine with the devil, so to speak, we lose our appetite for the things of God. And this is this is one of the reasons why we can't eat at the table of the Lord and the table of devils. It's 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 like saying, well, I can eat a little bit of concrete and I'll be okay. You know, I mean, people in the Lord, it's just stupid. It's like if if I went in the backyard and and uh, like snuck a few spoonfuls of gravel and you know dirt, I think that that ruined my appetite real quick for for normal food. You know, and it doesn't have any and and that doesn't have that that would be like the ultimate junk food. You know, it doesn't have any kind of of nutritional quality to it. But that's basically what people are saying. It, it, I mean, it's just it's just dumb. It, there's nothing in it to sustain life. There's actually things in it that my the life in my body would have to fight against to, to prevent disease. Amen. Our text says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth. And this is a qualifier. And it's one that shouldn't be take, taken for granted even for a second. And no one has a guarantee that if they have this thirst today, that if they dabble with drinking the devil's water, that they will have it tomorrow. And when they lose it, they won't care about drinking the living water anymore. The people don't think about it this way. People who want to walk the fence line between Jesus' camp and the devil's camp, they don't, they don't think about it this way. If they, if they lose their desire to come back, then they never will. Uh, one can think that they can do this little thing and then they can jump right back into newness of life. But in, in, in attempting to do so, they gain this callousness that they can't escape from. And we, and we know that this happens. We, we've seen this happen in our very midst. Uh, and we, we don't like that this has happened and uh, to, to our, our woe that this has happened, but we've seen it. We know that this is possible. That you can do this. Well, the hardening of effects of sin upon the human spirit, they absolutely cannot be underestimated. And we don't need any, any other example other than the people in the generation of Jesus. I mean, how can you see God in very human form before you and still say, crucify Him? How can that happen? Well, sin can bring you to that point to where you can be so hard to where you, that, that, that can actually happen. That can happen. Well, people may say, well, don't be ridiculous. I'm not that bad of a person. I mean, I, have, I didn't do that. 
well, I go to church and I pay my tithes and I go to church every Sunday. You know, what's, what's the harm in me holding back a little bit for myself, you know? Well, Jesus says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whatsoever, whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. And the, the, it's, it's not only that, that God won't receive you if you don't, don't give 100%. I mean, that's, that's true. But in, in this realm of appetite as well, those who don't live wholly unto the Lord, they can't ever really uh, live, they, can, they can't ever really live unto the Lord like, like it was designed to because they, their appetite is constantly being assaulted. They, they can't. They can't ever really get into the mode that they need to be in to survive the tempest of this world. Uh, this is something that, that must be guarded against. And, and the way which this is done is, is to let your soul delight itself in fatness. A culture this appetite. Uh, don't ever be satisfied with how much you desire the things of God. There is always a greater degree of satisfaction that can be realized. Amen. If you have a little bit of appetite, then, then satisfy that appetite you have. And as you satisfy it, as you fill to, to, to as you're filled up to your fullness, God will grant you more. So then let your soul delight itself in fatness. Now what does it really mean to, to delight your soul in fatness? Well, fatness is excess. It is abundance. It's, it's, it's richness. Uh, this is the nature of God. Wherever He exists, there is fullness. There is overflowing blessing. I mean, you cannot speak of the blessing of the Lord without some kind of form of abundance being involved. And in fact, if you remember, when, when the people departed from the Lord, He said that He would make them to have leanness in their spirit. You remember that. That's, that, that's what it's like for the, for the Lord to depart. Uh, I just wanted to give you a, a few texts here. It's... I was thinking about this. It's uh, in Psalm 65. It says, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop with fatness. Yeah, yeah. It's like everywhere he is, it's just, it just drops with fatness. Yeah, it yeah. reminded me of the um, when Jonathan was in the wood and the honey just uh -huh. dropped from the trees. Yeah. <laughs> That, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know, to know the love of Christ with pathless knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Yeah. See, this is, what, this is what is happening in salvation, that, that God is filling us with His fullness. He's yeah. not just filling us with, with a part of Him. He's not just giving us a little bit of Him. Well, we're being filled with His fullness. Yeah. This is the nature of God in salvation. Uh, we, we, we've been begotten unto, uh, again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of God, by Jesus Christ from the Lord. Of His, of His fullness have we received in grace for grace. He has, he has shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. I mean, this is just the manner of salvation. Uh, as, I was, as I was going through this, that, uh, uh, just overflowing... Uh, the, per, from the perspective of the child of God, this, this fatness, this overflowing, this excess is glory. It is, it is forever with the Lord. It is, it is the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ, the ages to, to come. In other words, don't get accustomed to meager portions when you're dealing with the Lord. Uh, when you receive from the Lord, don't expect small things. I believe the ultimate wickedness of this whole health and wealth movement in our day is, is that it robs people of the real riches that are, had, are to be had in Christ Jesus. In quest of unrighteous mammon and the health of the mortal body is the ultimate confirmation of the fulfillment of the blessing of God in our lives. I mean, what a, what a, a, what a robbing. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine what a, what a absolute highway robbery that they would substitute this for, for the blessing of God, for the true blessing of God, for the true riches of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. 
The truth is that in this world, we are currently being tried. This is true. And having to go through some ra- we are having to go some, through some rather unpleasant and quite frankly unsatisfying circumstances. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty unsatisfied by it in, in the current, which would seem to contradict what I'm affirming. But brethren, weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning. Amen. This is the only place where this disadvantage will ever be. From the passing of this world on into eternity forward, we will be openly known from personalities from heaven as kings and priests to our God. We will reign with Christ and there will be no enemies that shall stand up against us. We will actually take part in the judgment of these enemies. There will be no poverty to speak of. There will be no sickness ailing us. People want to talk about health and wealth. We'll have that. But we're not going to have to give ours up when we die. We're not going to have any pain or any sorrow, any disappointment or discouragement or hindrance. We're going to have a body that's completely completely compatible with our spirits. We're not going to say, oh, I have a a, a law warring against my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin that's in our members. Not anymore. Not on that day. We're going to be able to be in the very presence of God forever. Fatness is what I'm talking about tonight, brethren. Satisfaction. The ultimate fulfillment of the purpose for which we were created. Amen. Yeah, it talks about the wicked being destroyed with everlasting destruction, right? Now well, that word and its original meaning, it, talk, it really means uh, without utility, right? Forever without utility. Well, well to think about the opposite of that. We will be forever, forever, ultimately, you want to talk about the purpose-driven life. This will be the purpose-driven life in eternity, forever with our Lord. So let your soul delight in this aspect of the truth this evening, brethren, that the Lord is satisfying in every way that you can possibly express it. And more. In fact, when Paul was lifted up to the third heaven, he saw things that weren't even lawful to utter. He couldn't even say them. He couldn't even express them in this language. They were so wonderful. Now with that in mind, how does it sound when the Apostle says in Romans 8, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time shall not be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I I don't think they're comparable. I I really don't think so. Now brethren, what I'm telling you this evening is that you can tap into this satisfaction in the present time in, in measure as you come and as you drink of these waters. Now this is the promise, satisfaction, relief from your weary condition, shelter from the storm, a refuge from the wicked one. If any has fallen away from the truth, if there are any who have returned to the things which they've been delivered from, it is because of this very thing, because they have lost this aspect of salvation, that there is satisfaction to be found in Christ Jesus. They've been, they've been deceived into believing that there's some kind of utility or some kind of worth anywhere else. And that's, it's just a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. So this sets us in a direction for the last, the last portion of our verse this evening. And I think this is an appropriate way for us to end our consideration this evening. Incline your ear and come unto me and hear and your soul, your soul shall live. Now, knowing the things which we've heard this evening, what is hindering you from coming to Him? What would prevent you from seeking Him? Or what would consider you worthy of you halting in your quest for glory and immortality? Well, what could there possibly be that would do that? Now, I'm not asking for an answer. It's just something for you to, under, to, for you to consider within yourself. I, I find it, it helps me in time of temptation when I consider the goodness of God. Well, I consider just the effectness, the effectiveness of the death of Christ, the, the the things that He's promised us in the world to come, just these wonderful things. Uh, it, it helps to be able to just minimize the 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 efforts of the wicked one to kind of go around and switch the price tags on things in your life. Yeah. 
So then, brethren, incline your ears. In other words, set yourself in a position where you can hear the Lord, where where there's not a a whole lot of background noise that's kind of drowning out His voice to where whenever that midnight cry is given for you to be able to go and reign with Christ on His throne, that you'll be able to to answer instantly. Uh You'll be like those virgins that heard the call, not the ones that were were found sleeping and, and, and missed the door. And it closed. I'll to close with this verse this evening. And the Spirit and the Bride, they say, Come! Yeah. And let him that heareth say, Come! Yeah. And let him that hath thirst say, Come! Yeah. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thanks, brothers. Amen.